Hello and welcome to another mini-sode from Distant Waves. This is actually a really special mini-sode. This is our fifth anniversary episode. Holy shit. That's tricks. Yeah, this this is me, Ritz. This is our classic. This goes out unedited. So all the yeah. awkward silence that you sh- usually don't hear because Dominic does a lot of work of editing it out. No. It's yeah, gonna we're, be we're going low effort, classic style on this one. Like how yeah. I just used to record on Discord and upload immediately. Which is actually funny because I've only started doing that last year. The other ones were edited, but now we're not doing it for the anniversary shows because fuck it, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I have to, I have to post this tomorrow. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if, if it sounds like shit, if it feels awkward, that's basically all the recordings that we do anyway. Yeah. It's just the Strixes and eyes farts will be caught on microphone. <laughs> yeah, my sneezes and whatnot. Although speaking speaking of Trix's farts, you want to talk about the Borderlands movie? Uh yeah, it fucking sucked. <laughs> yeah, so I pirated it and I want my money back. I, I, I made a joke about how what we should have just done for the uh anniversary show was just us all watch the Borderlands movie and just commentate over it. Which, you know, there are some podcasts out there that do that and I I admire the shit out of that. But we we've we've watched so much shit and listened to so much shit recently and we didn't want to do that. I, I don't even know why Tricks even pirated it. Like imagine getting I, caught for copyright and pirating and it's a fucking Borderlands movie. I, I downloaded it on public Wi Fi, so Nah, being, you, you didn't want anybody to trace the fact that you saw the Borderlands movie. Yeah. So, uh, I'm too embarrassed. I gotta, I gotta know, outside of the trailer, obviously, and I've heard there's a... I mean, just reading the Wikipedia article itself, it, it seems like they've they've gone to the original Borderlands story and say, fuck it, we'll just get all the fan-favorite characters and make some bullshit with it. Yes and no. You gotta have it's, to explain further than that. It's kind of follows the beats of Borderlands One and the fact that oh, we need to find the key, we need to open the vault. Uh, but they added a whole bunch of contrived bullshit to it. Of course they did. Like um, <clears throat> Lilith gets her siren powers by opening the vault, as opposed to just already having them. Character growth. Apparently, uh, apparently, Tiny Tina's a Iridian now. Uh, no, she's not. <laughs> That's Spoiler. what I said. I was. Oh, okay. So they keep claiming that she is something in the movie, and like. Yeah, but it it turns not... out that Lilith is the one because oh god, Gearbox fucking loves Lilith. Uh, okay, so uh, for for all those who cared about Borderlands spoilers, who have been spoiled, if you cared about Borderlands spoilers, why the. <laughs> Why do you even care about Borderlands? Like the game yeah, one too, obviously, mind, but the, the movie. This is the movie that Jack Black protected yeah. by breaking up Tenacious D. Yes. And I am no longer it has grossed not... ten million so far. I said prior that I wouldn't attack Jack Black. I am now attacking him. Why? Why did you do this, bud? Like Could it's that bad. at all. You better but know my on the of derp. Yeah, I I ha- I felt compelled to watch it because I, I I I think I've made it known on this podcast before, but I'm a massive fan of Borderlands. Uh, Borderlands I, Two I, is I, one of my favorite games of all time. I stand by that with Borderlands Two. It is a fantastic game. Never fucking touch. You them. can put it. You can... I. <laughs> you you should we we should play them together at some point, Dom. I will coach you through them. I'm sure it'll like, be a fine time if I played it. I just I've heard everything about them. I I know I'm gonna hate the writing. Like in Borderlands 2, it is done it's done well. The annoying parts are done in this certain way that actually makes it feel like they have some part with him. Like Clutchup is kind of an annoying character in, in the first Borderlands, but, but it's actually <laughs> properly written out in Borderlands 2. Yeah, he is. And, like, he has a whole arc where he redeems himself, in a way. 
and then they shit on that in Borderlands 3, but that's a story for what another about time. Tiny Tina? <laughs> yeah. Uh Tiny Tina is a weird case. Um she's not even be... a main character in the original Borderlands 2 story. No, she really came to shine in her DLC though. Yeah. I see. So much so that it got a spin-off game. Mm. For Which her. was all right. It is like the one Borderlands game I haven't played. Yeah, it's all and right. New Tales. I haven't played New Tales yet either. I need to. I need to play that. But I need to play that. Hello. But I, I'm looking. I'm look. I'm looking at the uh, the retcons that they do. I'm hoping Dominic can still hear us. I can. You just, oh, there's so many retcons. Said, I need to play that. Yeah, you didn't cut off. Oh, that's basically all I said anyway. Um, yeah, I, I'm looking at some of the stuff. Like, uh, apparently Tiny Tina's Atlas daughter. I don't think that's lore. Nope, that's not lore. They completely uh, retcon Tiny Tina's tragic backstory where she yeah. has to blow up Hyperion soldiers with a grenade after they kidnap her mother. Yeah. Um, Dr. Patricia Tannis is apparently Lilith's foster mother. Yep, that's not canon in the game. Tannis um, is can... also just really weird because they made her old. She's supposed to be like 28 in the games. Yeah. I mean, look, they retconned a lot of weird bullshit in Borderlands 3 as well. Like the fucking Tannis randomly becoming a siren was just like, oh, fuck off. And I was. I think <laughs> well, that's, that's also the time much I later in the story. <clears throat> yeah. I want to do, do, do you guys want to hear uh, some dialogue about that? Uh, can I just get into like some nerdy nitpicks that I had about this sure. movie? Because I have a yeah. couple. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so in the lore of the Borderlands games, Threshers are not introduced to Pandora until the events of Borderlands, the pre-sequel, where the main character, the main characters of that introduce both old Slappy and Terramorphous to Pandora, where they breed and produce a shitload of Threshers in that game. Mm. Yet there's Threshers in the movie. <clears throat> The other one that pissed me off is that they go to Sanctuary and then they go to Caustic Caverns, which in Caustic, the Caustic Caverns in Borderlands 2 is one of my favorite areas in the game. And um, they first off retcon it so that it's now like a bandit camp. And then oh. they then they also made it because you have to access Caustic Caverns after it gets opened up after Sanctuary gets lifted off into the air. Yeah. And but they go from sanctuary, which is on the ground, to caustic caverns, and they're like a ways and, away. So they removed, um, they removed New Haven. Then I'm going to assume. Yes. The best casting, though, Marcus, the guy who played him, fantastic. Uh, Benjamin Byron Davis. Uh, I'm taking a look at the, uh, the look of him. I can say, yeah, that's not, not too bad. And um, Krieg was great too. Florian Mont, uh, um, Montanu, uh, something like that. That's that wrong. Uh, but I'm looking at just the casting on this. Uh, they've got a little and Roland, which I know you can't really have one without the other. Uh, it looks like they've got no brick. They have no chem- chemistry. They have no chemistry in this movie. Oh. No, I, I said Lilith and I said Lilith and Roland as the characters that are created in the game. Stop fucking Kate Blanchett and Kevin mm-hmm. Hart. Yeah, Kate Blanchett. Well, I'm, I'm saying Kevin even Hart. like they don't they have no romance arc in them at all. Jack Black, Jamie Lee Curtis. This is a COVID movie. They got all these fucking actors because they had nothing else to do. Yeah. And this is what they did. And apparently this was a recut of a R-rated movie, too. Based on a script that was apparently great, but then rewritten by Eli Roth before it was shot and made into this. Yes. Cuts cuts and cuts and cuts and cuts and redos and redos and rewrites. It's like, why don't you just make the fucking movie the way you liked it when you fucking read the script? Death Death by committee. Fucking executives and their bullshit. Just make the script you fucking bought. But I want them to realize the whole bullshit of uh, producers. Like when one of the reviews says, 
The producers made a bullshit uh, business calculation to avoid the R rating and allow children who enjoy the games to see the film, which, you know, that's a true thing that producers do. I want yeah. producers to start realizing that kids are fucking sneaking into MA15 films. No one is fucking buying the tickets as much as you think they are. People will just walk in and watch them. Kids will get parents to take them, or the DVD sales yep. will happen. You will get the sales from these children one way or another. Yes. Getting cold feet. Especially if, after you make the movie. It's a good movie. Getting cold feet after you make the movie is the worst time to get cold feet. You fucking shot it. You've already mm. probably edited a significant amount of it. Just believe in the vision. Yeah. 10% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's... Oh my god. <clears throat> a third yeah, that's only gross 10 tower. million. Mm. Oh shit. I... Look, when I when I played the first Borderlands, I played it as Mordecai. Brick. So already, I kind of don't care about the characters that are in this because the character I played with, it's not there. I, I no, yeah. I played with Lilith, Lilith for my second run, but that was with other people who had already picked it and had some had some better runs. And I'm like, you know what? I don't really care what character I play as. You know, anyone else? Can. But I'm just. It, it, it looks like they've really tried to to fan service the characters, but they haven't made the characters how they actually are. It's just, yeah. oh, look, there's that character that I like from the game, and I expected that to be the fan service. The character like, fan um, that will work, unfortunately. I don't know, I don't know. Why not the casual like fans? For, for Krieg. Krieg is a good example of what you're saying, because in the games... Uh, the only reason he's around is because of Maya. He's like super into her and thinks she's attractive. And so it's like tamed him a bit in a way. And yet Maya is not in the movie at all. So his motivation is just not there. Yeah. Would you say this all right, movie about characters just doing words. stuff and things? You can answer that one I guess. I was going to say, also, there's like a really extended Bobby Lee cameo that is just not good. <sighs> the movie huffed a lot of ass. That's really all I have to say. Let's talk about album music stuff. Yeah. Let's talk about the fact that yeah, we've been doing this for five years first. <laughs> Yeah, holy oh, yeah. shit. Dude, actually, fun, funnily enough on that, you know what the last ticket I bought is, Dominic? What? Tism. They're doing a headline show. Who? Tism. Oh, fuck. Yep. That was the first ever artist I, uh, I brought up. Yeah. Yeah. First artist you brought up. I still have never seen Janelle Monáe live. Maybe one day I will change that when I have money to do so. I have not seen uh, Hot Flash Heatwave live. You know, I'm gonna go see how many artists that we've uh, that we've covered that uh, I've seen live. We've uh, we've covered System of a Down. I don't think we've actually covered Rise Against, have we? We've not covered Rise Against. No. No. And I don't think. <clears throat> oh, we did do Foo Fighters. So we did um, Color in the Shape. Yep. All right, yep. So that's two. Uh, Violent Soho, Dune Rats, that makes it to four. Of course. Yeah, no, taking a look down on the, uh, the list here. Uh, Tiny Little Houses, that makes it to five. Hockey Dad makes it to six. King Gezzard makes it to seven. Wombats make it, makes it to eight. Uh, the most controversial of my ones, but I've seen them. Uh, Sticky Fingers, that makes it to nine. Last Dinosaurs makes it to ten. Japanese Wallpaper is eleven. I gotta make sure not to fucking double count these. Uh, Spacey Jane and Vacations makes it to 13. Middle East makes it to 14. We haven't technically covered Crywink. We covered, I mean, in a sense we have, but we more covered the. The compilation. That, do we wanna, that they did yeah, not do. Yeah. But we. Yeah. You know, for mm -hmm. the second, I'm not gonna count it, but I will count Mac DeMarco, obviously, that'll be 15. Charlie XCX is 16. Uh. DMAs now. That makes it yeah. 17. 
Uh, the chat makes it 18, I'm pretty sure, of Rod 2. I probably counted this wrong. Psychedelic Pawn Crumpets, Ballpark, King Singray. Slowly, slowly, that makes us on 22. OK Hotel, we're done. That makes it 23. Uh, JPEG Mafia, Pup. So now we're on 25. Fuck, what else? We've done Tame and Parlor, we've done Genesis of Rusev. We're on 27. Slide Web is, is 28. We've never done The Killers. And we've no. never done Arctic Monkeys, I'm pretty sure. No. no. Uh, 100 Gex makes it 29. Smith Street makes it 30. Turnstile and Speed makes that 32. Uh, More Rat makes that 33. Jungle Giants is 34. Phoebe Bridges is at 35. Mum Jeans at 36. Beach Bunny at 37. My Chemical Romance at 38. Black Midi at 39. Royal Otis at 40. We've never done Old JM, pretty sure. Nope. Nope. Tropical, Tropical Fox, Fuckstorm at uh, 41. Bigger Boot at 42. Uh, we're, we're getting to the end of it now. I'm just looking at all the ones that we've never actually covered. We've never covered um, we've never covered idols, and I think the most most surprising one is that we we've never covered Tiger's Draw. It, they've been no. referenced a lot, but we never actually covered it. We've... I think I was at forty two or something was yeah. the number I said. Large Dispute would be forty three. Blind Girls would be forty four. Spanish Love Songs would be forty five. Fiddlehead uh, Fiddlehead would be forty six. Uh. Dear Seattle, which I never mentioned, but I would have seen a bit of it, would be 47. Uh, we've never actually covered Evanescence. Not yet. Break Club at 48. Luke Brazi at 49. Dust at 50. Rave Tapes at 51. Private Function at 52. Ammo and the Sniffers at 53. All right, we're getting, we're get, we're getting to the end here. Uh, Garage Sale at 54. Teenage Dads at 55. We never actually covered Peach Pit. Tricks, you, you said you were going to cover Peach Pit during his five years, and we never actually have, have we? Yeah, we have, and that's my bad. Surprising, I wonder. Jeez, uh, so we're really getting to the end of this now. I think we're at, what, 55, I said we are. Betty Ray's at 56. Um, Children Collide at 57. Friends of Rome. At 58. D did we cover a Devo album? Devo, no. No, no, no. I feel like that's one of those ones Tricks would have picked. Not yet. They've been on my oh. list. Yeah. Pigs, 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 pigs. 59. Freezer is 60. Doris is 61. Uh, fucking hell. We I don't think we got much more. There's still one name you haven't said yet. Uh, Heartaches is 62. I probably missed one. I'm just I'm like scrolling down on this. Uh, fucking. Scream Feeder at 63. I think I know the one uh, Dominic's thinking of. I would hope so. Have we done, have we done Dinosaur Jr.? Yeah. No, we have not. No, no. Uh, I think we've actually only done. We've only Jay Mascus' stuff. We've done we actually done. We've done Mogway, so that's 64, I'm pretty sure is the number. Yeah. Wednesday is 65. <clears throat> uh, Black Country New Road at 66. Hot Mulligan at 67. Hanoi Traffic at 68. We're getting there. I'm just looking at all this. Uranium Club at 69. <laughs> Dr. Shaw yeah. at 70. Uh, Peach PRC at 71. I would have actually missed the first one of that. Uh, Clowns at 72. Melsaturi at 73. Which I assume these are the ones that you meant because Blind Equation at 74, Your Arms at 75. Nope. You still missed one. What was on the one? 
Still with Son. Yep, that's fair. I'll, I'll... We will look back even longer. You get No, I haven't seen him live. Oh, you did? No. Fuck. I guess no, I, I've, I've mm-hmm. never been. They, yeah, they've they've never been able to. Uh, oh, regurgitator in seventy six. They've never been able to play outside. I, I was thinking your arms. Of Melbourne, seventy seven of Jet City Sports Club. Because I'm just remembering all the ones that like. Oh yeah, we covered that. Uh, I think that seventy eight at Donny Benet. I think I can think of another one, actually. Seventy nine at Met Dog. 80 at 1 300. There we go. I think that's it. Um, oh, no, I'm, I'd, we, had, we had one more. 81 at health. <laughs> there you go. So uh, we have covered uh, yeah. 81 artists yeah. that I've seen live. Are you are you? You saw Death Tripper though. No. Not Super Death either. I did see Super Death. Yeah, that would be eighty two. Okay. Uh, but Death Tripper was only in New Zealand shows. Got it. Got it. And Dominic coming to realize, oh yeah, that's a different country. But uh, as I was mentioning, I'm up to uh, a classic 89 this year. It's been a uh, a pretty hectic year for live music for for singing, and then I thought I would struggle and get to like 100 in December. But now I'm looking like I'm getting to 100 next month. Chicks got jealous and left. Oh shit! Ah, uh, she'll be back. That's probably just a little bit of an internet issue. You get those things happening. But yeah, we're up to we're up to a fucking classic eighty nine goddamn gigs. Hello, Tricks, you are back. Ah, uh, Tricks is still having some issues, but we'll show that will be worked out on there. I crashed. Oh. There we go. Ah, that's all good. That's all good. Do we remember where I was up to? No, I crashed. No, no, no. I'm um, talking to Dominic for the uh... you, you were at a, like you were at a round number. If you give me a moment, I can look back at your posts. I think it probably would have been the Hockey Dad. Might have been. Like, the Fortitude... I think it was the Fortitude Music Hall. So, you know, I'm just going to start off from Slide Rivers, which would be... 77, I'm pretty sure. 77, 78, 79... Yep. It'd be, uh... It'd be 7... Did I also crash? Hello? Hello? Fuck. I switched my internet. These articles they found when I searched Florida man. Hello? Hello. Yeah. I I completely died there. For How much did I? Well, what was the last words I said? Oh, you were talking about Hockey Dad. Like, oh, it was probably Hockey Dad. Yeah, it was Hockey Dad. That was the that was the last one. I'll I'll I'll, I'll go from seventy seven. Am I if I'm being caught up now? Yeah, you're good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I shouldn't. Have tried yeah. To get so on as I was saying, now. the um, never go back on Instagram. So yeah, the the first act that I saw to Sly Rivers, which is uh, the one that I'm planning on covering when they release an album or an EP, is Florida Man. I uh, the whole point of that project was is that they they write songs like these little old country songs. I uh, I mean it's more country than old about news articles when they search up Florida Man. Hell yeah. I was like, am I dead? Did I get caught up on tape? There's just no reaction. <laughs> no, but we're listening. Still Sly Rivers yeah. for the third time. Great band. They got a new drummer in there. I think they actually got the drummer from Eskimo Joe, surprisingly enough, uh, playing with them right now. But yeah. 
Uh, Hockey Dad at the Horton Pavilion was gig 78. Uh, that was seeing Hockey Dad for the second time. It was originally supposed to miss that, but things went around and blah, blah, blah. And so I'm again. Uh, there's not really much more repeating from that gig that didn't happen at the previous Hockey Dad one, so if you want to know how that was, listen listen to when I talked about that or whatever episode that was. Um, the Mosher military gun was a lot better, but the one where it absolutely peaked was the military gun sideshow a couple of days afterwards at the Lansdowne Hotel. And surprisingly, I think this is the first time I saw him this year uh, because I just missed all the chances, but dust opened. And that's just still so fucking good. Like, if you're going to ask what one of the best live acts in Australia is at the moment, it's Dust. Interesting. What? They, they just, wow. they're very, it's a very tight band that they play. They, they're playing music that is very distinctly theirs, and it just fucking goes off every time. It, it, it's a full recommend every time. I, I, it hasn't been a single time I've seen Dust where I haven't completely fucking appreciated it. And that completely warmed up the crowd because military gun, just that was, I was feeling a little sick that day and I decided I would hang up by the back, not really get into too much contact with each other because if I had anything, I didn't want to pass it. Yeah, I, I'd done my COVID test. It was all negative and stuff. So I figured it was just a small head cold. I'll be fine. I was wrong. It was the flu. Uh, so this was a bad idea for me to have actually come out. But seeming as I... Stood away from everybody. I hope I gave uh, nothing to everyone. But if I wasn't sick, I would have joined that mosh because it looks so fun. Hopefully, you didn't get it sick was... at the show. No, nah, no, nah, it wasn't. It wasn't at the show. I can I can guarantee it on that. Um, but the sensible uh, person in me came out after that. I'm like, All right, I'm sick, and I didn't go out for two weeks after that. Uh, 14 days is now currently the longest break I've had between gigs all year. Wow. Wow. Uh, I, I, I missed Tenacious D. Could I could have been there. I could have been there. You I should have been, been there, there for the moment. But I was have been. Uh, uh, but I came back for a pretty uneventful show, the last dinner party at the Horton. Uh, they're a band that's blowing up at the moment. They uh, they truly got all the lesbians rallying behind them, and I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll be the one sh- one non lesbian there. It was good. I I, I admire them for doing a Sparks cover because absolutely nobody at the front row of that concert would have known Sparks. Uh, Sparks. <laughs> After that, Greenwood at the Lord Gladstone. Uh, that was one of those I've been missing a lot of gigs. So let's go see, let's go see a random gig that's uh, for free. Uh, I had heard of the opener, Finding Better Health. They're a bit of a shoegaze emo act going around in Sydney. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'll give this a go. So it means it's a free show. Uh, both bands were pretty tight that night, so I'd give a recommend to seeing either Greenwood or Finding Better Health. But ultimately, can't really tell you too much more about that show. Oh, other than finding better health, did a uh, did a cover of your deep rest. Ooh, but that was cool. Uh, next, the one that I was hyped for and so so healthy for. The series did their comeback show. If every man needs a series phase in their life, I will cover series on this podcast at some point. Okay, but okay, they're they're a, a Melbourne based. Uh, you know, emo rock uh, band. Uh, it was just that was just beautiful. Finally, like seeing the band back and getting and getting to hear a bunch of those songs I had listened to a lot during in uni, but never got the chance to see live. <coughs> as I die from another sickness, or the old one coming to find its last bits of life. Ah, uh, had a bit. It's, it's mm-hmm. just me. Yeah, it's just it's it's me still getting over the, and the sickness I've had. Um. Yeah, I, lo- I love me some series. That was that was a that was a great show to sing along to and pretend like I knew all the words 
but ultimately I didn't because I'm an idiot. Uh, two days after that, I saw Shady Nasty at the Lord Gladstone. They're a, a Sydney post-punk band that's get gets kind of a lot of buzz when they play. It's one of those like, you know how every city has a kind of like secret band that everybody knows of there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like mm-hmm. that. Because uh, the 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 folks at the Lord Gladstone are hundred percent like they they needed the security to tell people you can't enter. It's full. Because that was over capacity. I'm well, surprised yeah. there was no crowd crush on us. Yeah, that was that was absolutely fucked. <laughs> like great great gig. A shady nasty <clears throat> shady nasty named after a it's always sunny in Philadelphia bit. Potentially, they've been around since like 2019 or something. So, it's uh, the restaurant that Danny DeVito owned in it, and it's uh, it was Shit Dynasty in the show, but everybody pronounced it Shady Nasty. Uh, I need to watch more. It's always sunny. I need to rewatch it myself. It is now. I got I got the question for for you two for the next one. If you go see your friend play a. Uh, a set which is just them at a pub just basically doing covers and all that kind of stuff for two hours. Would you consider that a gig? Yeah. Yeah, cool, because yeah. I did. Cool, because I did. Shout out your friend. Who That's it. Fair does. enough. Yeah. Ben Harris from um from Aphrodisiac. I, I use friend loosely. It's more from the Kratons, but still. Uh, the band Aphrodisiac are an actual proper Kratons from that as well as Dylan, the keyboardist from that, so... Uh, shout out Aphrodisiac, I guess. Go, li- go listen to their music, but you can't because it's on streaming. Uh, 85, Garage Sale. Uh, they played, again, at the Lord Gladstone, but the upstairs, so I was there three times. To- I was at a at a small pub three times in a week. Wow. That's that's so so rare for me. I don't, I don't like going to the same place multiple times. I'm like, are they starting to recognize me? Um, that was a surprisingly early show that for a Friday, it started at like six, which keep in mind, most people like the, the standard workday is nine to five. Right. So you're, yeah. you're basically asking like an hour after you go, go straight to the gig. So you either, you know, if you live close by, you can, you know, drop all your stuff off from work or anything. And that's, the, you know, if you're working a normal work week. But that's always a fun little venue to uh, to go to. This time they didn't have bands go from the sprinklers or hang from the sprinklers, so I, I don't think any of them are going to get barred. That's good. But I picked up both both Garage Sale releases on CD. Nice. Oh, so I saw Freight for the first time, and I will be covering Freight at some point because they were fucking good. They're in that kind of slow core, uh, scram style. Yeah, you know, I, I think they're very similar to Doris out of all the stuff that we've done, but they're not as uh, they're a lot more uh, tighter or like mature musically than Doris's sound is. Okay. Okay. And then I went straight on a bus after that because it ended early enough for me to catch something else that day. I saw Bread Club again. We do like a good Bread Club. Yeah, uh, they're mm-hmm. supposedly they're supposedly got an album out coming soon, and it is sounding different to uh, to the EP that we covered. So it's it's been a while. We we covered uh, that EP. I think that was a twenty twenty one EP, wasn't it? I believe so. So yeah, it's been a while since we covered Breakpop, and they've they've changed their sound again. So very excited to uh, to to see what that album comes out with. It's sounding good, just from that live show. Uh, it was a lot better than the show that I went to last year where uh, me and my friend were two out of seven people in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, well, that was on fault with the venue, though. The venue like just not advertised that this was happening at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, for one of the more interesting ones that happened, health. This is gig 86. One of the the opener was Joshua Wells, I believe, was on the uh, the kind of decks and Karina Utomo, which was basically one long song, and it was a very kind of 
experimental noise project happened for 20 minutes. Okay. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm still not sure if I fucked with it. I appreciated it, but I don't know if I fucked with it. But that's still not even the weirdest moment of the whole uh, whole thing, because the next artist uh, is Ziani. Uh, if you've if you've heard of Ziani, it's unfortunately probably not because of her music. Uh, she was the the first like one of the first artists to come out about Die Artwood. Mm. Oh, uh, which is. Uh, I, when I, uh, that was like my first introduction to Ziani and like, oh, shit. <clears throat> and I would kind of had heard her music, but I was never really into it. I'd never seen her live before, so this was the first time seeing her live. And trust me, it's a lot better live than it is studio. Although the weirdest moment of the whole set was when she pulled down her dress and, and poured like red paint over her tits. Okay. Choice, for I'm sure. Not sure what <clears throat> she meant by that. But okay. Something was probably meant and it was completely lost to me. Blood simulation, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I think it was cool that she had these white flowers that got soaked by the paint and just threw them out into the crowd. I think there was That's a lot of cool. people, people more into her music that kind of understood what was meant by that. Sure. Uh, the mm -hmm. last song was a, out of this kind of whole like noise hip hop kind of influenced uh, sound. The last song was just a it was just kind of a dance track that was called bring back come hell yeah you know I, don't, I've, 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 I fucked with it i thought it was a good set i thought her music was a lot better live but I, I, I can't lie and say that i fully understood it That's anyway fair. health did play health did play tears tears is great so we did get a Max Payne free song. Hell yeah. But they didn't play Girl Attorney. So I want my money back. Probably played stuff from Death Magic, uh, I imagine. Which we haven't covered yet. Yeah, a lot from uh uh from Rap Wars actually, from that last album. Okay, that's also understandable. They mm -hmm. they, they they actually had a very like long set list, uh surprisingly. And it was very, like, they did cover as much as they kind of, I guess, could. Um, I'm, just, I'm just looking at the, at the set list of, uh, yeah, here it is, at Manning Bar. So they've done one song from Disco 4 Generations, Disco 4 Part 1, Disco 4 Part 2, one from Get Color, one from the debut Health, they did Zoo Fawns, one from Max Payne Tears. Uh, Major crimes. They've done a couple from Dev Matrix and a couple from Slaves of Fear. They did be quiet and drive far away. The Deftones song. Interesting. Interesting. But most of those are from Rat, uh, Rat Wars. I mean, it was it was it was a great set though. Well, the health was pretty great. Uh, last two to go on to Last Dinosaurs. I uh, saw that with my brother. They did a really cool thing before the uh, show, which I didn't really get to properly check out. Uh, they had Dino Mart open, which they said the venue was open for uh, for two hours to everybody. And you can just go into this, like, merch stand that they have set up. And it's an actual, like, it's set up as actual kind of like a small pop-up uh, shopping thing instead of just a standard merch stand. So it was kind of cool. You could actually kind of, like, browse at, like, an actual store. Uh, my brother got there early. You could take pictures with the band as well, and this was all free. You didn't need a ticket or anything like that. The most you know, interesting thing that they sold is that they actually sold their foot pedal that they use. Interesting. Like not not the one that they used on stage, but like they they made like their own foot pedal, and it's like only two hundred fifty bucks or something. I don't know how much it's supposed to cost. That's fascinating. I would have bought one for you, tricks, but it's a bit expensive, you know. Yeah, uh, expensive uh, shipping to the U.S. too. Like a four hundred dollar pedal, all said and done. But they had quite a lot of uh, merch there. My brother actually picked up. They made like they made like their own comic for the album. Okay. Uh, he picked that up and got it signed. Uh, I already have their signatures on two of their CDs, I believe. I believe in Numino Garden and Wellness. Um, they played a pretty long set list, actually. Uh, 
it, it feels weird to think about, but we don't usually get much gigs, especially at the Metro, go till midnight. Uh, they played. They started at ten thirty and played till midnight, so we got ninety minutes, and they played around twenty two songs. So it's a pretty long set list. Hell yeah! And uh, unfortunately, a lot of it was the newer stuff, which I hadn't really looked, properly listened to yet. But we did get some classics. We did get uh, some stuff of U Meadow Garden, which I believe Dominic, you actually listened to that album on your own terms. U Meadow Garden, yes, pretty good. Yes, yeah, I think you liked it more than in a million years. I did. Correct. I yeah, always, I always meant to they do play it for the show, but yeah, I I I think it's their second best album. I I, I think there were some absolutely beautiful moments on there. Italo Disco is a fucking really great breakup song, which isn't this kind of oh fuck you ex kind of thing. It's an actual like proper reflection of a relationship that doesn't work. Um, mm-hmm. They played Bass God, which that one was also a pretty fucking classic song back in 2018 for me. Uh, you know, played played some of the highlights, and then yesterday, not yesterday, two days ago, I saw Spy. It was a hardcore show at the Chippo. They uh, that's the same place I saw Your Arms. They've covered up the hole in the ceiling, and by that I mean they put a poster over it. Fitting, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's just a hardcore show. I, I never really heard of Spy beforehand, but everyone was telling me to go see it. So I'm like, fuck it, I'll go see it. It's only thirty bucks. And that's that's where we're up to. We're up to eighty nine. We got eleven more to go. Uh, I will say for my hell part, yeah. Uh, tonight I saw Billy Porter perform. We were having a festival out in Chicago here, Market Days. Billy Porter was mm. the closeout show for one of the uh, stages tonight, and you know, I was out with friends. We're like, oh, it's gonna happen soon. Might as well go. So we did. Do you see anything else there? Was it just Billy Porter? There was other bands. Like Weekend Run Club was playing. I just didn't have a chance to go oh, see nice. them. Uh, oh. August Hotel was playing today as well. But I thought they broke up. I know. <laughs> That's the weird part. Mm-hmm. But I only, I, I August playing. Hotel, if, 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 if you're out there, what happened? I, I, we'll see what happens if they uh, continue to do stuff again. But yeah, Billy Porter was cool. Uh, no, That's I'm cool. not like familiar with his music or anything, or their music. So, like, it was all kind of over my head, in a sense, but a lot of good energy, well, you know, taking a stand, making some speeches, you know, really, you know, driving home the election stuff, which is really cool, and just good messaging. It was, it was a fun time. I mean, we, yeah. we've, we've covered a lot this year. We've done, over, not just this year, over the past five years, and talked with a lot of musicians and stuff like that. And I think, I think one of the big things that we kind of, can come out from all this is the idea of just seeing artists that you don't know about. Yeah. Yeah. You know, big, bigger regardless, I think... uh, big or small or regardless like that. I think there's, there's something pleasant about, um, you know, you, you just going out and you, you don't know who the fuck Billy Porter is and you still just go out and see it. And there's, there's so many people, you know, it's not, it's not just random strangers. It can be your closest friends who say they won't even go out to see an artist unless they know like, most of their I mean, I, I know who Billy Porter is in the sense that it's someone who's been around for a long time as, like, queer icon, you know, so, like... Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it, I think you get more out of it than I do, because, like, when I don't know the songs and when I don't know much of anything, my my attention span does kind of waver a bit, and so I'm just kind of there. Yeah, that's, that's, so, that's, for, that's for everyone. That's not, that's not a, a thing to deny, but it, it, it's still the giving everything a chance while some people won't even give a chance with bands that they do know a lot better than they think they do that's that's totally fair um yeah they introduced all the the drag queens that were performing uh with them and it was it's funny just because like the last one was just like super fucked up did not expect to be on stage being asked about like what they were doing where you where you can see them in the city and they were just like oh you can find me anywhere up and down the street You got it out there. You 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 you're doing your best. Yeah. <laughs> what was the best uh, drag queen name? Oh, uh, actually, I was really surprised that there there was just a ton that were like, my name is Summer, that kind of thing. Fair enough. So, um, I I, I guess before we get onto a full tangent of this, I know Dominic, you love tangents. 
But yeah, one of the things we kind of want to do, yeah, well, what we want to do with this all being a five year, I guess, anniversary is, I guess, more properly reflect. You know, we talked about what we've done recently now and our recent stuff, but I guess we should properly now reflect on what has been five years and, you know, what, what could be a fun way of doing this. Let's all just like think of random questions to ask each other about stuff that we've covered over this five years, whether it be directly about an album or if we want to say what's the thing and, and name an album, whatever, just random questions. That's my That'd idea. If someone's got a better. Yeah, Trick seems already down for this, so this yeah, is two against it. one, Dominic. That's three against zero, Dominic. <laughs> uh, Trick, you, you've already got a question, so um, I guess I guess the way that we should do this is just we ask the question and then uh, like whoever didn't ask the question answers. So you know, two answers to one question. Are we doing this what thing? were your guys' go ahead? Uh, what were your guys' favorite of my universal number one? Oh, that's hard. To I gotta say. gotta remember what you yeah. I gotta remember what your universal number ones is. But then tricks is probably you, you probably got it fucking written down, don't you? It's like yeah, this I, is why I get to sleep on. T- tattooed right below my left butt cheek. Right, right below the waves. Oh, sorry, Dave's. Yes, because I have a tattoo of this goddamn podcast. Wisdom and Dave's. We're not good at advertising this shit. Holy fuck. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Ammo and the Sniffers was really good. Yeah, I think Apple and the Sniffers is a case of like this is fucking good, but that's also recency bias. So I'm just trying to trying to think. Like I, I I've haven't properly like written down uh everything we've covered this year, so I, 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 I kind of like can't remember. Oh oh, oh yeah. sorry. The obvious answer is making mirrors. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is an obvious answer in a sense. I'm just uh, I, I'm just thinking back to fucking everything to know if that's like the right answer to pick. But the problem is that we we're not going to remember who won every episode. Yeah, that that's fair. That was a bad. Question. Yeah, uh, it wasn't a bad question. It was just it, it was just a loaded question. Yeah, fair enough. I, I'd say I, I, I'll agree with Dominic. I think I think if we got to just say for stuff that we can remember was the universal number one. It's making mirrors. Absolutely fair. It's an amazing album. Um, here's a here's a trivia question, and my, this might be wrong. You might be able to help me if it is wrong. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that, that's fine. Yeah. To my knowledge, there is only one album we've covered that, while available on like streaming or something, has never been commercially released in the United States. Like an official album, not like a thing that we found that we uploaded. You know, like a. Oh, uh, I I think I know this one, but I'll let Chuck do the first uh, first answer if she can. Um, shit. I, I'm thinking it's got to be something Australian. I uh, Dominic, don't say yes or no. Just I I um I want to let Chuck make the guess and. If she doesn't do it in 20 seconds, then I'll make my guess, because I'm pretty sure... Uh, I'll, let, I'll let you make your guess, because I have no idea. I'm pretty sure you're referring to Film of Plum's Better in Black. Correct. Yes, you are right. That is... Yeah. Because I can remember that, because Dominic was asking me to, to rip it uh, for him and all that, because Film of Plum, I think, is still not commercially available in the US at all. Uh, some of it is like the monsters wow. and stuff. Some of it is. Um, is. Oh, monsters is. But like, yeah. that was always the weird thing to me was better black. Just you can't just buy it, and that's so fucking strange. And we would have covered that in 2019. Yeah, when it was new. That that was yeah. yeah that was when uh, you told us to pick random numbers, and uh, as retaliation for me picking sticky fingers, I. Yeah. Uh, you picked uh, you, you picked Film of Plum, which you know, on hindsight, is pretty fucking funny. But also in hindsight, if you look at the albums that both of them had in 2019, Film of Plums was better by a mile. I'm not yeah. talking about the ones that I picked because I like Land of Pleasure still as an album, but then you know, it gets into the cancelled cancelled uh, artist argument. Yeah. Uh, the actual Sticky Fingers album in 2019 was crap. And whilst Better in Black, I think, has some flaws, and there are some kind of context moments to Better in Black I don't really care too much about, the album itself is good. There are some really fucking great songs on it. Mm-hmm. 
I have. I'll stand by Nick Nick Cave being the best song off that album as well. Yeah, I remember that song. I do have a question. I think it'd be a more open ended answer. Um, yeah, yeah. What is the most fun you've had, like, like listening for the week or doing something for the week, something like that, like preparing hmm. for the next episode? Um. I, 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 again, like telling you most fun is one of those loaded ones because you're, you're remembering five years ago. At, at least point out a remember, like a time you remember having fun. But, uh, I think, I think, you know, I, I, I think actually that week, uh, that fucking before COVID, uh, where we discovered Recan Run Club, I was really pleasantly surprised that I was just listening to what was. Uh, yeah, and not guilty pleasure music, but you know, music I really think uh, I would ever really cover to uh, to per se. You know, you you always hear like oh, high school friends and stuff like that, and they they make an I make an album and all that, and we cover and we've covered a bunch of stuff similar to that, and it's been pretty. Yeah, yeah, I, I have definitely I think expanded that. that network for my part of the world a lot, and it's been mixed results. And I think that was a surprisingly fun, fun week. I, I look what's in there. There's uh, Dune Rats, Rush, Wolf Parade, and Recon Run Club. That's actually a pretty strong week when it comes to fun music. Yeah. yeah. Not not in a sense of like, oh, this stuff is silly and goofy. It's like, it's fun to listen to. I like yeah. I like that Wolf Parade album, even though it's probably the worst that week. I did not like it. I I don't remember it. That was part of the problem. It, it's, it was okay. I mean, it's not fully rememberable still over this, but I can remember Julia Take Your Man Home still, and I haven't listened to that in a while. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> Paranol deciding to actually, like, being so in love with that album that I actually decided to watch that fucking movie, even though that movie was kind of hard to watch, just because I'm, I'm white. As fuck, man. What, I didn't understand half the shit that was happening in there. Yeah, hey, I remember we watched All About Lily Chojo. That, that, was, that was cool. Yeah. I, I like doing that. Yeah. I, 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 I can't tell you, like, these are the most fun, but like, those are, like, standouts in my yeah. mind. <laughs> this might be cheating, but for me, the most fun that I've had with this podcast is when I went to Chicago to see Home is Where. I do think us going to Nashville the ZBT League also counts as a fun time. That uh, that does also count as a fun time. The escape room. Yeah, the Nashville escape room. That was really fun. Yeah. Uh, for me, I would say one of the one of the more fun times uh, was when Ritz you you had taken some time off to move and stuff, and yes, Trix yes, so that would have been old mini sites. Trix and I got on the Green Day train. Yeah, the network's money, money, twenty twenty Ripples. part two surprise dropped. Yeah, as we were doing, it, stuff. you know what? I forgot to mention what probably actually is the answer for like what the the funnest time I reckon was, and that was, I, I guess, during the start of COVID, and we we're just still doing the, you know, we're doing the COVID podcast before everyone else is doing the COVID podcast, and we're still making popularity, and we just said, "Fuck it, let's all make EPs." We yeah. did the EP challenge. That was a pretty fun time. It was. Uh, there was a time that we all wrote songs. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. And then. And got Pete to judge him. And that episode was so long, I cut it in half. Yeah. That was, I can't tell you that was the funnest because that cut very churring at the end, but that was still. It was still a time. Uh, also, going on to the Nashville thing. Uh. I driving to Kansas City to see Petite League a second time and missing the podcast recording because of it was a really fun time that, too. Yeah, I'm sure it was. <clears throat> I, I like uh, having that just like, oh shit, my plans got fucked up. I'm going to go just do this instead. It, it's fun when you have a, a moment in life where you can do that kind of thing. Yeah. So, I, I, I'm going to go move on to another question now, just because otherwise yeah. we get stuck in this one. Uh, and it's for both of you, it's not a trivia one. It's not, what do you think is the most, um, like, oh shit, we covered that. 
it's what do you think is the most forgotten album that we've covered though it's not forgot that we covered it it's like forgotten album that we have covered and I, for this one you'd have to i guess go a bit past like you can't really say an album that's come out from the past couple of years because yeah. you know, I, I have i have an easy answer for this for me yeah uh dr dogs be the void um, for me, I would say the uh, Shell Silverstein stuff. Yeah, that stuff's great. Like, part of the whole thing of that was like, oh, he's not just where the sidewalk ends guy, you know? He's not just children's yeah. poetry man, he did all this other shit. And it's really interesting. And really good. Well, I, I, I just scrolled through a random one, and if we counted 2020... Uh, to say that that's up the past couple of years and it's just in the cutoff, I'd say it's Cave Boys and Night in the Park Kiss in the Dark. Yeah, that's definitely one that we have not talked about much since. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, what's that one song called? Straw to Gold? Silk for Gold. Uh, that's one I still listen to. I like that song. Hell yeah. yeah. I, I, I still listen to Lonesome. From that Dr. Dog. Yeah, the Dr. Dog one is one of those ones I've always liked, but I feel like I've never given its flowers because something else that week was good. Because we listened to something it was going up... from Dr. Dog that was like an EP or something that it, had similar songs it on was, it. It was going up against um, <clears throat> Live at Jittery Joe's. All right. Well, I'll, I'll I'll do a follow up onto this question though. Right? What what album do you think we've had the least like to say of for not just at the time that we covered it, but f- from the future onwards? Like what has basically had no relevance in our plot since we've covered it. That's a great huh. question. Yeah. Because there's a bunch of early ones, obviously, but I think they still had some relevance in that early period. I mean, part of the early stuff was us just trying to figure out what we were doing, right? So a lot of that stuff yeah. became lore, whether we liked it or not. I I yeah. have one. Um, Smash Mouth. With, uh, with Fushio Meng. I feel like... In a sense, if you talk about with how early it was and how much it probably should have, yeah, yeah, but I I I would also disagree. I think there's there's albums that have had less, even kind of more <laughs> more recently. I mean, yeah, you know, some that you know only gets uh, some because of uh, of how much we hated it and stuff. I would actually argue Jelly of the Month Club. I don't, we yeah. haven't really ever gone on to. To the top of kids' music since. We've, we're yeah, talking about sublime. music by kids. Yeah, or Sublime. So there hasn't been... I, I think we've mentioned it a couple times in passing, but realistically, I think it just hasn't been much reason for us to have ever really covered that. I mean, we could have said um, <laughs> Primus and Claypool Lennon before we did Primus. Mm. Yeah. I, I think, too... Like the early stuff, like the early picks, we were in such a different mindset of how we wanted to tackle these things that, like, picking something like My Chemical Romance now seems kind of weird. You yeah, know I mean? you know, I, 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 I've got another fun question now as well. What artist have you forgot that we've covered? Because I've just found one that I can answer this with, and I know why we covered it, but I'll say it after you, you two have said an answer. Let me look at my list and see uh-huh. if I've forgotten anyone. Yeah, it's, it's more like the case. Well, it's obviously if you haven't written them down, you're not going to know. But it's like when you look at that and you go, "Say, oh shit, we did actually cover them technically." Maybe not even technically, we did cover them. Hmm. Okay, I think I can name Cause, them. Yeah, because there's some interesting ones, especially in 2020. I'm trying to think back to my 2020 picks. Well, it doesn't have to specifically be 2020. It can be throughout any of these years. But I'm the one, the one up, I'm picking. Uh, 
what, what, what was that other artist we covered? Oh wait, I know one. Um, I for, I forget the I forget uh, King's X. Yeah, Dogman. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that is up there. Just, I, I by the way, for this, I'm not talking about um stuff that was covered in a compilation. You know, like um, you, you you take a look at something like Melbourne Scar Orchestra. I'm just doing this at random. They, they would have only been picked once. For re-rooted. Yeah, like... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not talking about stuff like that. Or, I mean, we, we did a lot with Noteworthy 01, and I don't know if we've really yeah. Stuck yeah. stuck those artists out again, really. No, we, we haven't. We covered their EPs as well. No, we, we, we covered... Um, well, a lot we of them haven't thick. really put out music since. That is true, that I've, is true. I've, I've actually kept tabs on them. All right, Trixie said you had an answer. Uh, uh, she said, um, um, I, I did. Uh, King's X. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Um, uh, my answer to this. You have one, Dominic. Yeah, Mal Blum. Yeah, uh, Mal Blum. Yeah, that was close there, but um, and it's actually very close to the period that I was going to pick. But this is also just for what I'm saying because I sort of did the reminder of exactly why we picked him. It, it, it's such an obscure one because I, I, I figured we thought we would probably uh, cover them more, and I didn't pick them. Dominic picked them. It's Two Door Cinema Club. I was thinking about yeah. that when I passed by it on this yeah. list. Yeah, we've only done four words to stand on a, a demo EP that they. I. Uh, we covered that because we covered it with the Weekend Run Club EP because I talked about with the album how much the, it reminded me of early Tudor, and Dominic was like, alright, bet. And, that was... and that's a random EP comparison that we've done. Same week as Jelly of the Mum Club. That was the week where and I was something really... For that was the really, week I was really upset you didn't just go with the vibe and pick a club band. Yeah. Yeah, I do that. I will say... Uh, like... I'll let someone else pick the next question, by the way. I, I just want to comment though, like I, I feel like with twenty twenty we were like on a path, like on a specific track, and like it was it was I don't know, it felt like linear in a sense where it was constantly evolving because like there was no definition to what this was, right? Mm. And I think yeah. the things that like fifth wave and all of the kind of DIY stuff we've covered since then has like opened us up to covering literally anything, which is. Scary and fun, but also like very non-linear and like more jumbled than it used to be, right? Well, mm -hmm. the fun fact is as well. I don't think we covered a single fifth wave artist or artist that's considered in the fifth wave in 2019 or 2020. Even I mean, granted, it's not the year that it kind of broke out, but it still was existing in there. But yeah. the first one we would have covered would have technically been Mouse Tui. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was a 2019 album, and we covered it uh, in 2021. So somehow Mouse Turi was the introduction to Fifth Wave, but the actual proper one was obviously the Home is Wearing the Paramour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we, we had to set kind of the mood. You know, we had to do our We Got Run Club stuff. We had to do, you know, the seismic stuff, right? We had to get those yeah. ideas out there. Mm. Um. Although, funnily enough, because OK Cool is kind of considered in that, they were covered before uh, Home is Where It Looks Like. Yeah. 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 Because I'm looking at it, there was a pretty uh, pretty wild streak I did. It was Mogwai into Genesis of Rusu. Uh, and then, looking after that, we had a bit of time. Yeah, I think I pulled out for like one week or some shit like that. And then it was Paranol into Home is Where. I mean, the the week you're talking about was literally called Blender Week because that was the week that was everything was just kind of like, eh, you know. Yeah, what even was that week? Uh, that was my first attempt to get us to do Deer Hunter, the migrant to migrations <laughs> annex EP. <laughs> Trix, yep. you did uh, uh, Shapeshift with me, what, and Rex, you did uh, King Gizzard Live at Sydney 21. Yeah, I'm ah, pulled up yep, right now. Yeah, that's why I wasn't on my list. Um. 
one thing I can see here as well that we never forget, this somehow had more relevance to our plot just because it was something to insult that was picked in 2021 was Alex Boniello. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Like, that and LSD are, are like, go-to examples of, like, bad things, bad albums. Mm. Yeah. Like, this, this whole period was, like, a huge thing for us. Like, there's the period where we did, like, Petite League and Neutral Milk Hotel, and there's this period of, like, Genesis Owusu all the way through, like, Alex Bowling Yellow and stuff. Just in terms of, like, yeah. what those albums have meant to us and have, like, we've talked about since. I guess, here's I'll a I'll let question. someone pick a different question. Yeah. What, what frontiers do we still have to, like, conquer here? Like, what is still something that we've not done or, like, a thing we've not considered? Like, years ago... It would Black be metal. Like, Black metal, sure. Like, doing Through the Soil years ago would have been wild to think about. But then we did it. Yeah. Something like Sebasius would have been wild. Right. I mean, in a sense, we've... I mean, it's not like we've really conquered anything, because there will always still be mountains to climb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with every every genre or scene or everything like that, we haven't covered it all, and never will. Right. As much as we would like to say with a premiere fifth wave emo podcast, there's still a lot of fifth wave that we probably haven't even acknowledged. We say it in general. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, even with claustrophobia pop, we're probably the only claustrophobia pop podcast. And there's still so much with that. I mean, Death Pop has their own podcast. Mm-hmm. So we're the only non-label. But there's still a nose. I think we're we're more ahead of that than oh, you say most people. The fucking underground scenes, of course, more people are oh, most people, but we're more ahead of that than I would say some uh, people would be on on other genres they would, uh, consider to be experts on. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not to say that we are experts because we're still kind of idiots, but we have covered. A lot of it. We have. But still to that point, though, besides, like, black metal or something like that. It's ironically pop. It's the other direction. That I don't think we yeah. did that much. That's valid. Yeah. Like, we've, we've obviously talked about some pop out there, so I know. Uh, Dominic, you've picked Choice of Iron a couple times. Um, we've covered BTS. So I think I've only covered them once, thankfully. We did Lady Gaga back in 2020. I think we did that we did. a few times, but it was mostly mini sounds until I put it on the main show. Yeah. And, and, and there's been some attempts, I guess, to kind of uh, get back to that. I mean, I picked Charlie XCX uh, this <laughs> year. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Chappelle Ron, however you pronounce it. Uh, it. It's not like it's not something we can't conquer. I, I don't think it's ever really been in our taste to, uh, to go full into the pop. Even even when there are obviously some crossovers. It, I think um, it's more to the fact that, like, listening to a pop album is not, like, what you do. If they're not... When you put on a pop CD, like, two of those songs are going to be good. The other eight are going to be just boring. Yeah. Hip-hop as well, I feel like we, we kind of start going that direction, but it's kind of been very uh, in and out and mostly out. I, I will say, for as far as that goes, I've always been very conscious of the fact that I, do, I, I, I feel like I never pick diverse enough picks. I always want to do more. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, that's fair, that's fair. Like, I, that's yeah. why I want to do Schoolboy Q this year. I still have that on my list. Alright. But I do end up covering a lot of white artists, or if I do like queer artists, it's like the same queer artists. So that, that's always been my goal, to keep expanding that. And once we get out of this Radiohead Muse thing, I think I will do a lot more, too. All right. Uh, Chicks, Chicks, I'm going to let you do the next question, because you haven't done a question in a while. Uh, yeah, I actually have a fairly good one, I think. Uh, what was your guys' favorite uh, episode art <laughs> of like what we've done Ooh. so far? I, 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 I 100% need to go around, but 
A good one that's going to be hard to beat, just off the top of my head, is Egg Tip. Dominic recreating the Fick album art is <laughs> yeah. one, of, one of the pure peaks that we did have. Um, I'm probably stealing some of these answers, but also uh, the Shaky Graves uh, one with the, the Babe, it's time for more Shaky Graves. Yes, dear. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm looking through, like, just all of these. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. we got we got some some classics as well, but just off the top of my head, those two definitely stand up. Uh, I'm, I'm looking favorites. to see if there's anything else if I need to like speak out. One, of, yeah, one of my favorites is the edit of um, Dope Throne. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a, that's a that's actually really well done. Surprisingly. Thank for, you. Like our quality for our quality as well. Yeah, that that one was me. Uh, there's the "Come Fly with Me" one that you pointed out recently as well. Yeah, that one's a classic. We have some that are like some like absolute just crap that's on there, but it's it's just funny that they even exist as album art. I, like... I I like doing the individual album art. I feel like it it adds something to the podcast. Yeah, like yeah, like, like the year. Original artwork that we did was just pixelating one of the album arts, and then yeah, that was that was how I was doing it. And then I had the idea that we could, I could just fuck around. Well, I'm looking at like the first one that this kind of stopped with, and it's Thelma Plum is where we kind of start to more shit. You did you did the Thelma Plum one, that's why. Yeah, which is Dominic on there, and then Dissident. (laughs) Dissident Waves episode 13. This is a classic. I think I edited this one. You did. And it's the Scream Feeder one. And it's you playing the guitar, which looks so bad. Like, so just... That's What's the, the point uh, of the context? That's you playing guitar on the toilet. It is. <laughs> and that's where we started to shitpost a bit more. But the actual one, first one, with no album art on it for a, a, a proper episode is British Horse Jumper of Montreal. I yes. want to fuck Jeff, Rag- uh, Jeff Magnum, but <laughs> Richard Jewell won't let me. So I cry myself to sleep until my dreams take me away. And in the morning, I find no one in my bed but myself, alone. The, 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 and, and it's just that picture that you had of me, <laughs> and you've drawn it yourself. Yeah. That's the first episode art. In which we don't use the uh, the album art. I wish I still had that original artwork. Like some of these are definitely works of art, just for how fun they are. But some of these I definitely just threw together, especially when I started doing them. That's like, well, yeah. Sometimes I had an idea mm-hmm. that I was trying to do, and it just was like, I don't know how to do this. I'm just gonna do this instead. I, I'm starting to definitely noticing I'm starting to have my uh, my tricks, the things I kind of go to, but mm-hmm. I still want to try to keep it different and keep it varied, for sure. Yeah. Uh, there's that time where, where both of you, I think, uh, tried to do the homeless wares, Patrick. Yes. Yeah. And you couldn't decide, I... so it's just both of you. Yeah, I recreated it from scratch because I couldn't mask it properly or clone stamp it and i just did it like yeah how you haste or whatever um where is it there was one uh, there was the uh king gizzard episode one where it's the the singer and it's like the microphone feeds into a faucet and the faucet's going into a brain yeah yeah brain yep. uh, yeah i think that was yeah. i think that was when we did um well, oh, that was one I had initially and... done, and then yeah, no. we we post I posted it underneath that image, and you kind of just combined them. It was before you got into King Gizzard as well, because you got into them with um on there and go Gavin or however pronounce it. Yeah, yeah. So it was before that as well. Uh, let's just a shout out, uh, good old Pete's uh, episode art for the uh, the comedy one, yeah, where he he he, yep. sh- he 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 made his first ever one with the. Uh, Putting out faces all over, and he, he just randomly inserts himself as the cars again. He doesn't even bother himself. 
I, I have almost <laughs> made that my Twitter banner. <laughs> I think those are the highlights. I'm looking through the others. Um, yeah. I mean, I like doing ones where I use, like, old pictures of me or I, like, write something down and take a picture of it. I think those are fun to do. But, yeah, those yeah. are, like, the major highlights for sure. It, it, I will say, it, well, actually, no. I do like the Dog Park Dissidents one that I did. Yes. Where I got the hood and made it, like, a weird, like, Dolly Parton-esque um, thing. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. I see that one, but... Yep. Like, I, I definitely put a lot of effort into that one. So that that was cool. Yeah. Um. Fuck, I'm, I'm trying to think of what's a uh, what's a good question because I don't want to like two obvious questions. I mean, either ones that like, kind of like truly make us think of the episodes that we've done I, here, and on there. Here's something I think that I think that I think so far we have outpaced what we thought this show would be. Am I wrong? A hundred percent. Yeah, I think most of us thought this would be done after three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> we stuck with it and like we've uh -huh. done something incredible with it. How long realistically do you think we're gonna keep sticking with it? I'm game to keep going as long as you guys want to keep going. Three weeks. <laughs> maybe after the LMFAO uh, post-apocalypto yeah. combo yeah when, when we get cancelled for our takes on LMFAO it's over I mean, I'm still keen yeah. on going it's something I really enjoy, uh, I really enjoy. I would be, I'll be real I think this is kind of why we've also stuck a lot with the, with the fifth wave and the cyber grind now that we're going into an acrosophobia pop if we didn't end up talking to as much artists from this as we have, I probably would have lost interest. Yeah. yeah I would have thought, like, there's just not much reason to go on. But it's the fact that, like, this has also just become, you know, it's not like I personally want that to be my main career, is having, uh, is being a music journal, talking to artists all the time and stuff. It's something I want to keep as a hobby. But the fact that it's been able to evolve that way, not even just as interviews, by the fact that, you know, we've been able to communicate with artists or at least just get into the scene and learn more about music and all that outside of just listening to the albums. It's made it there a reason to keep going with this. Because uh, I don't give a shit about how much fucking views we get. That's never been our thing. We'll, no, not at all. We'll celebrate, no. we'll celebrate, we'll celebrate when we will look back at you one gets 100 because I think that's our most popular at the moment. Uh, are um, popular. No, no, it's 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 Lorenzo Cook with ninety three. Lorenzo and then our Halloween and horror movies episode both have ninety three. Yes. Yeah, so if someone could just watch that episode seven more times. Um, it's only we'll seven do, hours. We'll <laughs> you have seven hours to live. Beautiful. I I find it funny that in our top five is our is our fifth episode where we call Neutral Milk Hotel a ska band. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a bunch of um. Of rage clicking, yeah, yeah, and then people probably going like, "Oh yeah, these 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 fuckheads don't know what they're doing," and that is true. But yeah, it's a, it's a fact that you know we got into that, and this is how our podcast has evolved. This, you know, if we if we never had that evolution, then we would have failed. Not just as as a success commercially, because we've got no commercial success. We're underground. No one who's underground has commercial success. That's how it works. Yes, but more so as as doing this shit. Uh, realistically, as that still keeps happening, this podcast will still go on. As long as we keep finding new ways to break ground in some way, or like things keep happening to us that are new and different, there will be more stuff to do. Mm. Like mm -hmm. this is yeah. Like in the last year is probably the first time we've gotten like a significant they got a significant amount but like a consistent amount of like notice and coverage and like mentions right of like good and bad artists reacting to us doing their shit yeah yeah i mean we, we can talk about obviously the most controversial out of all of those but we won't um i've, I've already made enough peace with that man uh but my fa uh, i think my favorite moment out of any concert uh, of this year uh, was it was just talking to Harry from Mouse and Tyrion, him like actually recognizing saying, like, uh, when I said like, oh yeah, I'm the guy from the Discord and stuff, it's like, oh wait, shit, were you on that uh 
on that podcast. And it was just someone who was just happy, I guess, that anybody had covered him uh, in, a, in a band uh, back in the day. Mm-hmm. You know, you're just getting even one artist that's like been thankful that he just even covered us. It's just like insane. It's like, oh, shit, I recognized him and he recognized me. I guess we're best friends now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, Harry, I have your key. I mean, it was very easy to trade on that for Petite League because we got we got close to Petite League early on, and that was like the only band that we were really like in close to at all. Yeah, like Lorenzo has been really cool. We've covered him in every way we possibly can at this point, so it's mostly mostly just waiting for new stuff to drop. Yeah, I mean, in a sense, I like connections kind of like properly broke out when we uh, when we covered Bigger Boot. Yeah, Bigger Bigger Boot, and we will look back at you for both. I think. Yeah. Well, a bigger boot led into we will look back at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> one thing I'm really one thing is this is unrelated, but one thing I'm really appreciated about this podcast is that it, I've gotten better at like pixel art because of it because I've just been like <clears throat> drawing shit for it. Hmm. Like uh, the step up in quality from our our first logo to our new one that debuted this year. Yeah, it definitely is better. I do like it quite a bit. Yeah, I do like that this podcast has made has challenged me to keep up with music. Like I was always afraid of being that guy in my twenties that just stopped listening to music that was new and just focus on like the shit I already liked. Like knowing like what that was five years ago versus now, I I would have missed out on so much. And look at us all now, listening to your arms on my cocoon because I put out an album five four not five hours ago. Yeah, talking the fucking blind equation because we can. Indeed, I mean I I think. I think we still got some other interviews that we need to try and uh, try and organize. We'll see if we can get them. Uh, not putting out the names of any artists that we. Um, oh, I'm trying. Ha- ha- have tried with because I don't want to. Uh, don't want to spoil anything or you know make pressure any of those artists. Absolutely. Not. Um. No. Nah. Yeah. But I will say I've been trying to think outside the box a little bit with my with who mm-hmm. I've been talking to. So that's sweet. I. I, I, I I think we can probably, I mean, preferably, I guess not preferably. I don't want this this podcast to become primarily one thing uh, because that's just not what we are. It, it, it's just no point in being primarily one thing. But preferably I would like more inter- interviews just as we do, as we're just kind of starting to become better at them. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, our style of doing them, you know, it, it does create for some awkward moments. Or pauses and that yeah. happens, but I think that our way of doing it has always been very organic and leads to really interesting discussions that I think people mm. that are into these bands will genuinely enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I've had, um, I've had friends ask me, um, you know, when they put out their their new music and stuff like that, and they go like, "Ah, oh, uh, when are we getting our interview?" And I'm like, well, "When do you get the full?" <laughs> Full discography that people can listen to. It's a bit more worth it then, because else you're not advertising anything. It's it's a it's a case of like I'll always be happy to interview basically any artist. If you if you're an artist here, uh, who's listening to us because you're always like, oh, how do we get on? You could just message literally any of us and say, hey, we want to do an interview. And as long as you got like some music out or like some way that people can listen to you, we will say yes because then it actually gives a reason for like all this because. The whole point, I guess, of any interview or anything like that is, in a sense, advertising. And if we're, and if there's nothing to advertise and there's nothing to talk about or music-wise, then the interview's kind of just stale. Yeah. Like I mean, I'm. I was... when, when my when my when my friends get a bit more music out, I will happily invite them on. Whether that music's good or bad, at least there's something to talk about. Yeah. Like in, like we've had a uh, Cameron X on the show as a guest, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I'd be down to talk to Cameron X in an interview capacity. I'm not saying that's a, a, to pressure or anything, but like, 
do having people on a capacity is also this... something to explore too. Yeah. I can say in this sense, like with Cameron X specifically, that's probably not uh, too rough because just because Cameron X is a hobby, not their actual like path that they're going for. Because um, hey, much the person behind it's more more part uh, part towards uh, movies than music. Sure, the music's more just like and that's totally valid on, too. on the side. But I do get I do I do, I do get when you kind of mean in the sense though. And I and I do think as yeah. we keep doing this and get some kind of limited amount of notice for it the the responses we keep getting will be different will be interesting will be varied for sure yeah for for those who are curious we, we do get responses from the artists that aren't always public uh and they 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 vary um again we're not naming names in any of this shit because there's no reason to do that kind of stuff and even so even when you do get some of that uh ones where artists aren't so positive uh to you, most of the time they're pretty respectful, actually. So there's, there's yeah. no reason to ever kind of cause this drama. We're, we're always happy to to listen to that stuff, but we do get responses that aren't just public. Right. Yeah. It, it it definitely changes the mood and tone and like you know idea of the week, both good and bad, depending on what mm. it is. Like it's nice sometimes. Just yeah. To be like hey, thanks for doing our stuff. You know, thanks for covering. It. We really like this and this and this. And I have friends that reach out when we cover specific bands that they like, and they're like, "Yeah, I really mm. agree with that," or "Yeah, I don't know about that." They're like any feedback generally I mean, is great. I think it's yeah. You know, we, we we tried it once, and I I brought up that idea of like we all try and talk about all the albums all at once, and that didn't really work. And I think it's kind of good that we didn't follow on with that because I feel like when people do. Or they hear about the ones that specifically, not everything else. And you know what? That's fair. That's that's how that's how it goes. I mean, most people skip the end of Fantana, including me, to see what the score is and fuck off. I mean, the thing that I started doing at some at one point was just doing chapters. I, I figured that that was going to be yeah. the most helpful thing. Yeah. And you know, there were times where we'll, we'll throw it back and all that, and it's just not going to be able to be chaptered. Mm-hmm. Just, just, just how it is. Um, it's okay. So I mean, people, people always want to just stay for the stuff that they want to listen to. And hell, even if people are only listening for five minutes, well, it's five minutes more if we did, uh, than if we did nothing. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, do we got any other questions to start this off? Or I think we've, we've done a pretty good reflection of five years. We've done a pretty good reflection of five years. I, I guess I'll ask one more just to kind of cap things off. Yeah, no, right. go ahead. Go for it. What are you currently excited to cover coming up? That you maybe you don't have to talk about necessarily if you don't want to, but just like what's what's getting the no, idea no, no, machine no. going? Uh, uh, so definitely new... the one that I picked. Oh, but you got first, trick, sir. Uh, there's a new Rainbow Kitten surprise album that I've been listening to that I'm really excited to put on the podcast. Yeah, that came out recently. Yeah. Um, I mean, this Your Arms album that we're going to be covering. Uh, of course, excited about that. I mean, we we can kind of properly, I guess. I mean, we kind of talked about it in bits, but the the artists that we've listened to, just in all this fifth wave and even claustrophobia, uh, that has been inspired by Your Arms to get like a full proper fledged uh band album in a sense it's it's it's, it's pretty high right this is like a properly produced your arms album and, this so, is a- and that's not just talking about yeah that's not just talking about the quality of the um of the album itself that can be talked about when we do the actual episode and i'll talk about it when we do the actual episode but it's a sense that we we are getting and what i've always i, I i've always said like it was a good conceptually uh, band, but it really needed that proper production, and we got it now. So that that's like hype to talk about. It's the wish I had. Yeah, it, it's cool that we it's finally not, get that out. Just, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's not just out about the quality. It's like, all right, well, shit, this has actually got the hype now. So that, that's one to excite for. And I mean, they're um, realistically a lot of the best finds that we've had over this podcast 
have been albums that have already been released by the time that we found them. Is there someone else has discovered them, and I, I've, I've I've picked it off from them. But it's the artists that we've ne- uh, never heard of before uh, yeah. going into it that have um they brought up. I mean, it's not always been the case. It's not always the most underground shit. Um, but I mean, you look at it. I mean, we picked Bigger Boot, uh, discovering that off uh, B's fifth wave playlist, and mm-hmm. just randomly picked it, and, and you know that turned into what it was. Um, there have been obviously a bunch of other surprise picks that uh, I've done after a while, which uh, I've heard over for the year, but you two hadn't heard in- of at all until it was picked. Like underscores is a big one for that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> So the actual, like, what you're most excited to cover for is, like, the stuff that we just haven't covered yet. Yeah. And I, I, I think for me, I want to get back to doing more of that stuff, but I feel like, for me, there's a lot of things that are important that are left unfinished, and that's why I've been trying to get through some of the artists that we've covered, but not fully covered, and then this Radiohead Muse stuff. I want to get it done this year, because I want next year to be, you know, a, a brave, wild, new thing, right? Yeah. You remember when I said I was going to go through all the British indie albums? Well, to a certain point. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. We'll like, get there. Like, we're, we're at the point now with Radiohead and Muse that we're finally going to cover the album I've wanted to cover the entire time, which is the Adams for Peace album. Mm. Like, we're, we're getting close now. And I've been waiting to ca- talk about this for the entire five years. Hell yeah. So when we you know, there. I got, I got one more question, and I, I, I know if the answer is yes, it's not going to be this year because I know Dominic's already. You, you basically already got you planned out with what you're covering. Well, yes, but then you know, Paranol and you know, things, Angel yeah, are announcing yeah. albums and shit. It's like fuck. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's more important. Are we finally free of covering my shit? Um, no. No, like to excess plans. It it like doing it for the We're meme, inevitably gonna cover you again. Yes. Doing it for the meme was fun for a while. But you know, there's other stuff to cover. Like I yeah. like I like yeah, talking about your music. I like encouraging you to make music a lot, but we just haven't done anything that's been like super impactful in the same way that things were during Desk Climate Fun or and you did the whole remix thing. I love that. Uh, my favorite thing is you call them guest timing fun and impactful. I mean, the remix, I think, is still the, like, the funniest out of all of this just because you two ended up liking it. And yeah. Like, that's, that's where that kind of narrative arc kind of landed, right? We got to the stuff that we liked legitimately. Hmm. But, you know, I do want to cover your other stuff at some point, but that's stuff to next year with a lot of the other kind of loose ends that I've had, you know, trawling around my ideas board. You know, like, there's shit on this ideas board that I've just can kind of toy with. All right, well, the, the question, the question I'm going to ask then is if, if there is any on it, what is on the kind of loose ends that's that's on my my stuff? I mean, the as above, so below stuff. Uh, the yeah, has come above what looks below, yes, because you, you are on that. You're on Ambient Project Others. Mm-hmm. That's fair. It's it's ego. Cool. No further questions. Yep. No. That's I I respect. Um. I got no further questions, Your Honor. Checks, I had one, but sessions. I lost. <laughs> Whatever you guys will let me. I've been holding on to that for a minute, but you guys declined me on my first. Ritz declined me on my first attempt to do that. Yeah, wasn't I picking something important that week? I forget. <laughs> I had a thing on. Anyway, I think we've recorded for nearly uh, three hours here in total. Uh, not just this recording, we've done a couple things today. Uh, yeah. I, I think this is the time where we all let our voices uh, you go off. You, 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 can't, you can't continuously sing or talk for three hours daily. No. That is not a dig at anybody famous. <laughs> Wink. 
<laughs> All right. Well, that's it for Dissonant Waves this week. Thank you for listening. Sorry for all of the noise and things. Uh, I I'm not in my I'm not in a permanent setup yet, so I'm just doing shit. I'm trying to make it work. So if you heard all that, I'm just walking around my apartment. This is live and uncut. That's a we raw dogging it, baby. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna make some dinner soon. It's a thing of I'm gonna... sandwich type of dinner. Take a shit and go to bed because I gotta get up for work in five hours. Hey, is, you should start works. calling it taking a Borderlands, uh, wrapping it up. To <laughs> this is Dissident Waves. We've been around for five years now. Holy shit, what the fuck? Why is this happening? But it's cool that it is. Um, maybe we'll go for five more. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll get five listeners on this episode. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think the most insane part is that we've done this all. Oh, we're, realistically, like you look at the views that we get on our episodes, it's low, and we're still doing this. And yeah. at this point, it doesn't matter how low they get because we don't care. No. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Fuck it. Who cares? We just keep doing it because it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Our our shit's in the description below. If we want to do a proper sign out. We can, but otherwise, nah, nah. Enjoy your life, everybody. Bye bye.